Hey there from West Virginia. All right, uh, yeah, okay. Anyways, let's get to it because I know that you're waiting for the joke of the day. So what do you call a snobbish criminal going down the stairs? Snobbish criminal going down the stairs. A condescending, condescending. <laughs> oh, that was good. All right, well, let's descend into solving linear inequalities. Okay. When you solve a linear inequality that has one variable in it, you need to understand that you do exactly what you would have done if you were solving equations. The same steps in terms of uh, reversing that order of operations and doing what you've already done to the variable but undoing it in opposite order. That's why it's so important to know those order of operations. And also the idea of what you do on one side of the equation you have to do on the other side of the equation. Remember that idea of the pan balance. and You've got to keep it all balanced so you got to make sure you do the same thing on both sides. So exactly the same steps you would have done if you were solving equations. The only difference is there is a time when you're going to flip that inequality symbol. And the reason being, because when you have an equation and you've got that equal sign, that equal sign is saying to you what's on the left and what's on the right are exactly the same. That's what the equals mean. Two, uh, two sides completely the same. This is this. They are all the same. But an inequality symbol that looks like either this or this or perhaps this, or this, what that indicates to you is one side is bigger than the other side. Now, if you have the equal to part in here, that means the two sides could be the same. But the bottom line is this. It's not this type of situation where they are definitely the same. These indicate one is bigger than the other. In either of these two situations, one side is bigger than the other, or potentially the two sides are the same as each other. But I definitely do not have this equality and only equality idea going on here. So because of that, the whole pan balance idea is all knocked out. And so what you do on one side and you do onto the other side, it could flip that inequality concept around. The idea of perhaps this side being bigger than this side, doing the same thing on both sides could potentially change that. And now this side's bigger than this side. So because of that, there will be times when that inequality symbol will need to flip. So when is it that it needs to flip? Right here in blue. When you are multiplying or dividing by a negative, flip that symbol and you flip it around. Now, be, understand that this statement is a very specific statement. Does that statement say, when you multiply or divide, flip the symbol? No, it definitely doesn't. Does that symbol say, when your answer is a negative, flip the symbol. No, it definitely doesn't. It's a very specific statement that says when you multiply or divide by a negative, multiply or divide by a negative, that action flips that symbol around. And I like to say that I look at it as doing that action across the symbol. Because if I do that action across this symbol, then in my mind what's going to happen is it's going to roll that symbol over. See, if it's an equal sign and you do the action across the symbol, like if you would add to both sides, then when I do that across that symbol, when it rolls the symbol over, it's still going to be an equal sign. It's not going to change the idea that these two sides are the same. But here, when I add to both sides and I roll it across that symbol, it's going to change the idea of the inequality, and suddenly that symbol looks like this. So like I said, in blue, critically important. When you multiply or divide by a negative, that action doing it across the symbol rolls that symbol over. Now once you do that and you get down to your answer that may look like any of these four situations, the solutions are going to be sets of numbers. There's going to be a whole lot of numbers that could be the answer. Now back when you had an equation and, and you came up with, say for instance, your answer being perhaps like, oh, x equals 5. What that meant was 5 is the one and only number that I can plug back into my equation at the beginning and get the two sides to be equal to each other. So this variable has got to be a 5. It can't be anything else, only a 5. However, you will find that with these inequalities, you're going to get a whole bunch of numbers that you could plug back in and get a true statement. Understand that we're all talking about truth here. Everything with equations and inequalities is all based on truth. 
So in this type of situation, when you have an equation and you get this type of answer and you say, okay, five is the number that I can plug back into the beginning, that's the only number that will create truth. In this case, truth is the two sides being equal to each other. However, when you have inequalities and you've got situations like this and you're trying to create truth, there's going to be a whole bunch of numbers that you can plug back into the beginning and in this type of case, get this side to be bigger than this side or potentially equal to each other. In this case, get this side to be bigger than this side but not equal to each other. That's not even an option. And in this case, the numbers that I can plug back in will create truth only if what I get over here is going to be smaller than this side or potentially equal to each other. But in this case right here, when I plug that number, those numbers back into the beginning, what will create truth will be if they come up with this side being smaller than this side. And no equality, no, no situation where the two are equal to each other will suffice. So again, it's all based on truth, but in this type of situation, there was only not one number that when you plug back in will create truth. However, in these inequality situations, there's a whole bunch of numbers that you can plug back in and create truth. So because of that, we will call our answers solution sets. Now, that once you get to that solution set, like I said, it'll look similar to this. Notice in each one of these cases, I do have X's and A's and B's, but these A's and these B's are actually going to be numbers. So it would be like maybe an X greater than 5, or X greater than or equal to 5, or perhaps an X smaller than 5, or an X smaller than or equal to 5. So again, the only thing really that's going to be a variable here is going to be that X. But when you get to those answers and they look like this, um, you can graph those solutions on a number line. And once you get that graph, you can turn it into what we call an interval notation. And an interval notation is simply math symbols to represent what that graph looks like. So we'll come back to this here in just a minute. I don't want to walk us through this idea of, okay, how do I solve that inequality? Because this concept of interval notation is a very strange concept. So let's take a look at an example here. All right. So in each of the examples, and I'm going to have three more that we're going to go through after we get through these. Um, in each one of these examples, what we're going to do is we're going to solve that inequality. And remember, what that simply means is do everything you would have done if it was an equation. Just look out for whenever you multiply or divide by a negative. And when that happens and you do it across the symbol, roll that symbol over and flip it over. Once we've solved the inequality, we're going to graph the solution set and we're going to express the solution in interval notation. So let's take a look at this example. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if this inequality symbol was an equal sign, what would we do to solve that equation? And you know that means we're going to reverse those order of operations. So if we knew what the m was, and let's say we knew it was a 10 and we plugged the 10 in there, according to proper order of operations, we would take that 10, we'd multiply it by 5, and then we would subtract 8. But we're going to reverse that order of operations. The last thing we said was subtract 8, so that's the first thing we're going to fix, and we're going to undo that by adding 8. And keep in mind the whole pan balance idea, what you do on one side, you've got to do on the other side. Now when I add 8 over here, I'm going to get a 20. When I add 8 over here, I'm left with a 5m. Do I flip that symbol? Absolutely not, because we didn't even multiply or divide. So you have to multiply or divide by a negative to flip the symbol, and we didn't even multiply or divide at all. So we won't flip the symbol, and we're going to look at this. Now, the next thing to do to get that m by itself would be to divide by 5, and remember, pay and balance do the same thing on both sides. So now when we divide by 5 over here, we're going to get that m, and on this side, 20 divided by 5 is 4. Now, I did divide, so do I flip the symbol? Absolutely not. Yes, I divided, but not by a negative. So I won't flip that symbol. It'll stay just like this. Now, what we need to understand is that this solution, keep in mind, when it was an equal sign, remember, when it was an equal sign, we said that this meant this is the one and only number that we can plug back into the beginning and create truth. Truth being the left and the right sides being the same. However, in this one, what it says is, all the numbers that will work, that's these. All the numbers that will work are bigger than a 4. Remember, with inequality symbols, we've talked about this before. With those inequality symbols, the big end over here goes with the big number. The small end down here goes with the small number. So in this, the big end is with the big number. The small end is with the small number. So this is smaller than that. And remember, these are the ones that will work. 
these are the numbers I can plug back in. So all the numbers that will work are going to be bigger than a 4. So when I look at that number line and I go, okay, here's my number line, and here's 0, here's 4, where is everything that's bigger than a 4? Bigger than 4 is going to be everything over here to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade everything to the right to say those are the numbers that will work. The reason we do it this way is because, let me, let me step back a second and explain this a little bit further. The reason we do it like this is because we say, okay, what would work would be perhaps a 5, perhaps a 6, perhaps a 7. But wait a minute, what about this 5 and a half? Or wait, what about this 5 and a quarter? What about this 5 and 3 quarters and the 5 and 7 eighths? And oh my goodness, what about this number here? And all these numbers are bigger than 4. So what we're doing is we're putting dots on the numbers that will work because when we had an equation, that's what we would have done. When we had m equals 4, we could have graphed that. And what we would have done is we would have said, okay, I'm going to put a dot on what works. What works is just the 4. That's it. That would be the graph to represent that type of solution. So here, I'm going to continue with that idea of putting a dot on what works, but all these dots are getting so close together that basically this whole end of the number line is going to get dotted. It would be easier for me just to shade that whole side of the number line. So that's what I'm going to do, shade everything over here. That's going to continue on forever. And to represent that it's going to continue on forever, I'm just going to shade that arrow that's there on the end to say, yep, that's going on forever. Now, we used to, here's where the interval notation idea comes in. We used to say, okay, there's no equal to part, and what that means is 4 is not a solution. If I put 4 in here, will it create truth? Now, you put a 4 in here, 5 times 4 is 20, 20 minus 8 is 12, but that would say 12 greater than 12. Is 12 greater than 12? No, they're equal. But there is no equal to part in there. So, for truth to happen, this side has got to be bigger. Equal to is not okay. So, therefore, this 4, <laughs> therefore this 4, is not a solution. So, one way we, that we could represent that is we could put an open circle in there, and many of you are used to seeing open circles to say, nope, that doesn't work. However, what we're going to do, instead of open circle, we're going to put a parentheses in there. Now, the parentheses is going to go like this, and the reason we do this is all because of that interval notation concept. So, let me flip back here for just a quick second and then we'll finish this out. Um, so, what I had stated right here was when you graph those solutions to those inequalities, that parentheses is going to mean the endpoint is not a solution. What used to be an open circle. In other words, they are not included in that solution set. If it is included, in other words, the endpoint is a solution, it is included in the solution set, then that means we're going to use a bracket instead of a parenthesis. Now, we used to use a closed circle there, but instead of a closed circle, we're going to use a bracket. Instead of an open circle, we're going to use a parenthesis. And again, it has everything to do with this idea of this interval notation. So here's how interval notation works. Notice that we've completed our graph here because this graph beautifully represents, it's a nice picture representation of that solution set that says, okay, everything bigger than a 4 that works. So we've shaded everything bigger than a 4. We've shaded the arrow to say that's going on forever. We've put a parenthesis to say, no, 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 4 is not okay. Now, here's what interval notation does. It is math symbols to represent that picture. This is my graph. And now I'm going to put some math symbols to represent that picture. So what happens is, it's like saying, okay, I'm going to take a, a number line, I'm going to stretch it on the floor. This number line I'm going to put on the floor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to step on the solutions. I'm going to take a walk, and I'm only going to step on the solutions that are there. Now, here in America, we read left or right, we do our math left or right, we're even going to walk left or right. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to start my walk as far to the left as I possibly can. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to start way over here to the left and I'm going to walk, 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 walk and step only on the solutions. So as you look at this graph and I begin my walk, now I'm going to start as far left as possible, where would I begin? That's the tricky part. I can't really begin at 4 
because beginning at four would mean I'm going to step on four. It's a solution, but it's not a solution. So I'm going to get close, 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 as close as I possibly can to that. As close as I can get to the four, but not be on the four. So in order to represent that, what I'm going to say is, let's start at that four, but I can't really step on the four. Here's why we start using parentheses instead of open circles. If I would put an open circle here to say, okay, I'm not going to step on the four, that looks like a zero four, and that's very confusing. However, if I put a parentheses here, I go, oh, okay. This symbol means get as close to that four as I possibly can, but don't really step on the four. Now remember, I'm going to go all the way up here. I'm going to go on forever. So I'm going to put a comma right here that says I'm going to go, 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 go. Now how far am I going to go? Exactly. I'm going to go on forever, for infinity. So I put an infinity symbol right here to say, yep, I'm going on forever. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky trying to decide is that infinity going to get a parentheses or a bracket? Now remember, the bracket indicates it is a solution, it is a part of the solution set, and yes, infinity would be a part of the solution set. But let's think of it this way as well. Bracket means I've capped it off, I'm done, no more walking, it's over. However, if I'm going for infinity, I can take one more step and I can go, all right, this is done. Am I, have I reached infinity? Am I at the end of infinity? No, I can take one more step. Okay, now, is that the end of infinity? No, I can take one more step. And I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this forever and ever and ever. So therefore, because of that, infinity, I can't cap it off with a bracket. So infinity always gets a parenthesis every single time. And this is your interval notation that represents this graph and as well represents a solution set, but this is a nice set of math symbols that represents not only the solution set, but as well the graph. So, we have our solution, we have our graph, we have our interval notation. Now, let's go back to the beginning here, to that chart that I said, we're going to come back and take a look at this. So like I said, when you are solving your linear inequalities, you're going to take the same steps you would have done if it was an equation, you're going to look for when it's time to flip that symbol only when you multiply or divide by a negative. That action going across that symbol will roll it over. And then when it comes time to graph, we need to decide, okay, are they endpoints? Are they included? If so, put a bracket on it. Are they not included? Are they not endpoints? Well, are not solutions? Well, then that would be a parenthesis. And infinity always gets a parenthesis. So let's take a look at this chart and, and kind of summarize this. Like I said, the A's and the B's are all going to be numbers. It's like they're fours, fives, three quarters, whatever. The X's are the only thing that are variables. So in other words, something like this would be almost kind of like what we had before where we had that X greater than four. So to summarize, we're going to take a look at this situation. And remember, the solutions are here. The solutions are not that number. The solutions here say these are the ones that are bigger than whatever that number is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, okay, I'm graphing those solutions. And frankly, folks, it is much easier to do your graph and then kick back and do your interval notation. Even if the directions say, solve it, write the interval notation, then graph it. No, guys, always do your graph first because the interval notation rolls right off of the graph. It's so easy to make that interval notation because it's right in front of your face. So I'm going to take this solution here, and I'm going to jump right down here to the graph. And remember, this says everything that works is bigger. Big end of the inequality symbol goes with the big number. Small end of the inequality symbol goes with the small number. These are bigger than that A. So here's a number line, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, here's that A. Where's everything bigger than that A? Absolutely, it's everything over here, everything to the right. So I'm going to shade everything to the right. And remember, I'm going to shade that arrow because that indicates this is going to go on forever. Now I just need to decide how am I handling that A? Is it um, a solution or is it not a solution? In this case, it's not a solution because there's no equal to part. And remember, when it's not a solution, we used to use open circles. We now use a parenthesis and we now know why. It has everything to do with this interval notation. So I'm going to put a parenthesis right here. A lot of people get confused about which way to flip that parentheses. Does it go this way or does it go this way? I always picture it like this. This looks like a bunch of snow, and I picture it to be the snow plow shoveling the snow. 
So in this particular case here, that snow plow is going to shovel the snow like this. And that gets your parentheses turned the right way. So here is my graph for this one. Now, let's go ahead and graph all the others, then we'll come back to that interval notation. So this one, remember, what it indicates is here's my solutions. I'm comparing them to this number, whatever the A happens to be. So here is my number line, and here's that A. And remember, in this case, those solutions, they are bigger than the A. Big end with the big number. Technically, this is a greater than or equal to, but I don't care so much about the name. What I care about is, do you know what it means? It means these are bigger than that number, and these are the ones that work. So everything bigger than this number is everything over here to the right. So I'm going to shade once again everything to the right. Once again, I'm going to shade that arrow because it's going on forever. But this time I have to decide that A right there, is it a solution and included, or is it not a solution and not included? Notice we've got an equal to part. That means, yes, the A is a solution. It is included. So this time, instead of the parentheses, it gets a bracket. And once again, it's kind of like that snow plow that's going to shovel the snow in this direction like this. And that'll get your bracket turned the right way. Now, two more on the graphs, and then we'll take a look at interval notation. So take a look at this one. Once again, there's the solutions. How do they compare to this B? Small ends with the small number. The small ends with them. They've got to be smaller than that B. So in this number line right here, here's the B. Where's everything smaller than that B? Absolutely, it's going to be everything down here. So small n, I'm going to shade everything down here. And once again, I'm going to shade that arrow just to say that's going on forever. But now I need to decide how do we handle that B? Is it a solution and included or is it not a solution and not included? There is no equal to part here. So it is not included. So that indicates that what I'm going to do is put a parenthesis on it. And again, this idea of the snow plow shoveling the snow will get it turned in the right direction. So my parenthesis is going to go like this. And now the last one. There's my solutions. How do they compare to that B? And one more time, they are smaller than that B. Small n goes with a small number. And like we said before, everything smaller is going to be down here. I'm going to shade that arrow because it's going on forever. And one last time, is that B here a part of the solution and included, or is it not a part of the solution and not included? It is included because there's an equal to part. So that means it gets a bracket. And one more time, that snow plow is shoveling the snow in this direction. So it's going to get a bracket that goes like this. There's my graph. Now, let's take a look at this interval notation idea. Once again, math symbols to represent this picture. The beauty of doing the graph first is that interval notation rolls right off of it. So what happens here is, remember, I'm going to lay this number line down on the ground. I'm going to start over here as far left as possible, and I'm going to step, but only on the solutions. So if I start over here and I step only on the solutions, where do I begin my walk? Yes, as close to the A as possible, but I can't step on the A. So I'm going to start here at the A. But because I can't step on the A and it's not included, I'm going to put a parenthesis and then I'm going to put a comma that says, I'm going to walk, 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 walk. How far am I going to walk? Yes, I'm going to walk forever. So I'm going to walk to infinity. And like we said before, infinity always gets a parenthesis because you can't cap off infinity. So it's going to get a parenthesis to say, yep, just keep on going. Now, let's try this one out. Once again, stop a start, start as far left as possible. So I'm going to start way back here on the left. Where will I begin walking if I only step on the solutions? Absolutely, I will start walk right here at the A. But remember, this time the A is included. So it's going to get a bracket. And I'm going to put that comma to say I'm going to walk, 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 walk. How far am I walking? Absolutely, I'm walking to infinity. And infinity always gets a parenthesis. Now, let's flip it around a little bit. Take a look at this one. I'm going to start as far left as possible, as far over here as I possibly can. Notice what happens here. I've got the arrow that says, I'm going on forever this way. So where will I begin walking? Yes, over here at infinity. But be very careful because this infinity is on which side of the number line? Yes, it's on the negative side of the number line. So I need to have a negative infinity sitting there. Let me give myself some room. Negative infinity. And remember, infinity always gets a parenthesis. 
And now I'm going to walk, 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 walk. That's what the comma means. Walk, 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 walk. How far am I going to walk? Oh, I'm getting stuck right here because I'm only stepping on solutions. So I get stuck at this B, and I have to decide, is that B a part of the solution set? Well, this parentheses indicates no. So I'm going to put a parentheses with it. And now, last one, once again, start as far left as possible. Well, that arrow says I'm, I'm starting way back there forever at infinity, but once again on the negative side of infinity. So I'm going to start at negative infinity, which always gets a parenthesis. I'm going to walk, 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 walk. How far? Up to the B. Yes, up to the B. Now, that B, is it included? Absolutely, because it has a bracket right there. There's the interval notations that represent each of those graphs. And hopefully you're seeing, like I said, even if the directions say solve it, then write the interval notation, then do the graph, no, do that graph first, or do second anyway, solve it, do the graph, and then come back to interval notation, because it's so easy to take this picture and create that interval notation. And like I said, it just kind of falls right off of it, it just kind of goes, and it's right there in front of your face. As we saw in the example that we had done, Notice that it did, it just rolled right off of it because here's the graph and we just went it's right there because we went parentheses four, parentheses four, comma forever to infinity and infinity always gets a parentheses. So always do your graph before you do that interval notation. So let's take a look at this situation. In this example, like I said, always solve it like an equation. You just need to look out for when it's time to flip that symbol. So We've got a lot of options here for starting it. I think most people would start by subtracting that 2m, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. When I subtract 2m on this side, I'm going to get a 3m minus 4. On this side, I get 11. Do I flip the symbol? Absolutely not, because I didn't even multiply or divide. And I have to multiply or divide by a negative in order to flip that symbol. Now, the next step that I would do would be that, see, I notice I put all my variables on this side. That means all the constants need to go on this side. So I'm going to add a 4 to slide it over to this side. And that will leave me with a 3m on the left and a 15 on the right. Flip that symbol. Nope, still didn't even multiply or divide. Now, the next step here is that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide through by 3, and I'm going to divide by 3. Hey, I divided, so do I flip that symbol? No, I didn't divide by a negative. I have to divide by a negative in order to flip that symbol, so the symbol's going to stay exactly like it is. So here is my solution. I'm now ready to graph that solution, and then I'm going to write the interval notation for it. Remember, when I go to graph this, what I am interested in is I'm interested in saying, here's those solutions right there. How do they compare to that 5? Well, notice small end with the small number, so the small ends with these. They are smaller than that 5. Well, on this number line, where's everything smaller than the 5? Yes, everything down here. So I'm going to shade everything down here, and I'm going to shade that arrow because it's going to go on forever. And now I just need to decide, what about that 5? Is it a part of the solution set? and included or is it not a part of the solution set and not included. There's no equal to part there, so it's not included. So it gets a parentheses and once again the idea of the snow plow shoveling the snow. So it's going to go like this. And there is the graph that represents that solution. So now I just have to do the interval notation and again, so easy, it's right in front of me. Just remember, even though I'm going to go and it's going to sit right there, I always start as far left as possible when walking. So I'm going to start way down here at infinity, but like we said before, that's on the negative end of the number line. So it's negative infinity, and infinity always gets a parenthesis. I'm going to walk how far up? All the way up to the 5. Remember, the 5 is not included. It gets a parenthesis as well. And here's where it just rolled right off of the graph. Do that graph before you do the interval. It makes life so easy. So there's your solution. There's your graph. There's your interval notation. All right, let's try another one. Similar to this, but I, I want to put a twist to this. Because this time, instead of subtracting that 2r, I think I want to subtract the 5r. I just want to prove a point here. I know, most of us would subtract that 2r first. I would too, but I just want to make an illustration for you. So when I subtract that 5r on this side, I get a negative 3r minus 18. 
And on this side, I'm left with just a 3. Do I flip that symbol? Nope. Did not even multiply or divide. Now, the next step here, notice that I put all my variables on this side, so all the constants got to slide over here. So I'm going to add that 18 here, and I'm going to add that 18 here, and that will give me a negative 3R. And on this side of 21, do I flip the symbol? Nope, didn't even multiply or divide. All right, next step now, what I'm going to do is divide by that negative 3. That'll leave me with an R on the left and a negative 7 on the right. Do I flip the symbol? Yes, because this time not only did I divide, but I divided by a negative. And remember what I kept saying about it's the action of doing it across the symbol that will roll it over. I divided by a negative here and over here as well. So that rolling across the symbol will flip it around so that it looks like this. There is my solution to the inequality. Now, I'm ready to graph it. And remember, that's what I'm worried about right there. So I need to ask myself, how do those numbers, because that's where those solutions are, how do those numbers compare to that negative 7 that's sitting down here? They are bigger. Big ends with a big number, small end with a small number. These are the small numbers. These are the big ones. Where is bigger than this negative 7? Sure, yeah, everything over here to the right. So I'm going to shade everything to the right and shade that arrow because it's going on forever. And now I just simply need to decide how am I going to handle the negative 7? Is it a part of the solution and therefore included or is it not a part of the solution and therefore not included? Well, this, this equal to part here means it is a part of the solution. So therefore it's going to get a bracket and remember this idea of the snow plow shoveling the snow in this direction. So bracket going like this. And there is the graph that represents that solution. Now I just need to write my interval notation. And remember, start as far left as you possibly can. So I'm going to start way back here at this negative 7. And like we said, it is included, so it gets that bracket. And I'm going to go, 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 go. That's what the comma means. And I'm going to go forever to infinity. This infinity is on the positive end of the number line, so I don't need to worry about the negative. And remember, infinities always get that parentheses. So there's the interval notation that represents it. Okay, let's try just a few more because you know that I like to make sure you feel really confident with this stuff. And I want you to see everything that you could possibly run into so that nothing surprises you. Lots of examples is always good because it gets you really solid on this stuff. Okay, enjoy the scenery here while I uh, clean this up. Okay. So, let's try now, uh, you see this is D, and I've got one-third parentheses, 3T plus 6 parentheses, less than one-third parentheses, 6T minus 9. Okay, same directions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve it, and then I'm going to graph the solution set, and then I'm going to write the interval notation. Now there's a couple of ways of handling this. One way is to say, okay, let's distribute that one-third through. Another way is to say, let's just divide by the one-third from the beginning. Either way is perfectly fine. Um, I would not distribute through if the one-third will not distribute into nice numbers. Um, but it will, because if I distribute the one-third through, one-third times three will give me just a one. One-third times six will give me just a two, so that was nice and clean. And here, one-third times six is going to be a two, T. And then one-third times negative nine is going to be a negative three. So I get some nice clean numbers when I distribute through. Now, I multiplied through, do I flip the symbol? No. Remember, for one thing, you've got to do it across the symbol, and I only multiplied to this side when I distributed the one-third through. Same thing over here. I only distributed to the side. And I've got to be able to do it across the symbol to make it flip. Plus, didn't even multiply by a negative. But here we are. So now this looks very much like the ones we had previously where, okay, I'm going to put all my variables on one side. And let's just go ahead, for good measure, let's subtract that 2t here and subtract the 2t here. And I just want to see another example of flipping that symbol. So a t minus a 2t will give me a negative t plus 2. Do I flip? Nope. Didn't even multiply by a negative. Left with that negative 3 on this side. 
Now what I'm going to do, I put all my variables over here. Constants are going to go on this side. So I'm going to subtract a 2, subtract a 2. That will give me a negative t on this side. And on this side I get a negative 5. Do I flip? Nope, didn't even multiply or divide. But now remember, I want a positive t, not a negative t. So I can either multiply both sides by that negative 1, or I can divide both sides by a negative 1. I'll just go ahead and divide by both sides by a negative 1. So what this leaves me with is a positive t here, and on this side a positive 5. But hey, not only did I divide, I divided by a negative. So what happens? You guessed it, flip that symbol. So here's my solution. Now I'm ready to graph it, and then I can write the interval notation. So my graph, once again, here is that 5, and I need to say there's the solutions right there. How do those solutions compare to that 5? Well, remember, big end with the big numbers, small end with the small numbers, this big ends with them. They are bigger than 5. So on this graph, where is everything bigger than 5? You guessed it, right over here. So I'm going to shade everything here to the right. I'm going to shade that arrow because this is going to go on forever. And now I just need to figure out what am I going to do with the 5? Is it a part of the solution set or not? Well, notice I don't have an equal to part, so what does that indicate? Yep, you're right. Indicates a parenthesis. Snow plow shoveling the snow in this direction. So here's the graph that represents that solution. And now I'm ready to do interval notations. Remember, they fall right off of this. Because when I start here to the left, I'm going to start at the 5, but I'm not going to include it. That means parentheses. See? Right there. And then I'm going to go forever, ever, 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 for infinity, and that always gets a parentheses. There's my interval notation for that graph. Nicely done there. Okay, just a couple more. Again, I want you to see everything you could possibly see so that you feel very comfortable with this. Just two more. All right. So in this one, we have 0 0.5 parentheses, n minus 2, parentheses, and we have greater than, and we have a 0 0.4, parentheses, n plus 6, parentheses. So it feels kind of like the other one. The only difference is the other one had fractions. This has decimals. Once again, you could start with dividing both sides by 0.5 or dividing both sides by 0.4, but notice they won't cancel out. So you would be better off in this case just to go ahead and distribute that 0.5 through. And when you do, you get a 0.5n minus 1. And go ahead and distribute that 0.4 through. And you'll get a 0.4n plus a 0.24. No, I'm sorry, a 2.4. My apologies. There we go. That's better. And do I flip that symbol? No, because like last time, I did not do this across the symbol. The multiplication was not across the symbol, plus it wasn't by a negative. So I'm not going to flip the symbol, and now I'm ready to go ahead and put all my variables on one side, all my constants on the other side. So let's go ahead and let's subtract that point 4 in. Let's throw all those variables over here. It really doesn't matter which side you put the variables on and which side you put the constants on. We've discussed that before. Just separate them. You can put all your variables over here and constants over here or other way around. Makes no difference at all. So once I subtract that 0.4 in, I get a 0.1n minus 1 and on this side a 2.4. Do I flip? Nope. Didn't even multiply or divide. Now, I put all my variables over here. I'm going to slide all my constants over here, which means I'm going to add that 1. And when I add the 1, I get a 0.1n. greater than a 3.4 because it didn't even multiply or divide. So I'm not going to flip that symbol. And now what I'm going to do to get that in by itself and have a positive 1 in is just simply go through and divide by that point 1. So what happens here is I'm left with an n on this side and a 34 on this side. Do I flip? I mean, hey, I divided. Absolutely not. I'm going to leave it alone because I did not divide by a negative. So here's my solution, and when it comes to that graph, remember what I'm concerned about is that's, what, that's, that's the answer right there. All the numbers that are bigger than a 34, those are the answers because those are the ones that when I plug it back up in here, I'm going to get truth. 
So here is the zero, here is the 34. Where's everything bigger than that 34? Absolutely, it's everything up here. And so I'm going to shade that arrow because that means it's going on forever. And I'm going to put a parenthesis on that 34 because there's no equal to part. There's the graph. And now my interval notation, like we said before, rolls right off of it. I'm going to start here at the 34, as far left as possible. I'm not going to include the 34, so it gets a parenthesis, just like the graph has a parenthesis. And I'm going to go all the way to infinity. And I'm going to put a parenthesis on infinity, because you can never cap off infinity. Okay, one more. This is a big one, because I, like I said, I want us to see everything we could possibly see. This one is a pretty large inequality, but I think we can handle it. I think we're getting pretty good at this stuff. Okay, so we have a 5, parentheses, k plus 4, parentheses, minus 2, parentheses, k plus 6, parentheses, greater than or equal to, whoa, whoa, scrunch that, oh, that's good. Let me start over, didn't provide myself enough room here, try it again. Okay, 5, parentheses, k plus 4. 4 parentheses, minus 2 parentheses, k plus 6 parentheses, greater than or equal to 5 parentheses, k plus 1 parentheses, minus 1. Woo! That is a big one, but I think we've got it. Okay, remember, treat it like an equation. Do everything you would have done if this was an equal sign. So if that was an equal sign, the first thing that we would do is we would distribute all that stuff through to try to get rid of those parentheses. So we're going to distribute the 5, giving us a 5k plus 20. We would distribute that negative 2, giving us a negative 2k minus 12. And hey, I just multiplied through by a negative. So how about flipping that symbol? You're right. No, no. Remember, you've got to do it across the symbol. This is why I wanted us to see this one, because here's a situation where we multiplied it by a negative, but only on that side. You have to do it across the symbol to roll that symbol over. So we're not going to flip it. And when we distribute the 5 through, we'll get a 5k plus 5. Do we distribute the 5 all the way back here to the negative 1? No. Very good. Remember, distribute all the way through the parentheses but end at the parentheses. Don't distribute beyond the parentheses. Yes, the parentheses is there to remind us to distribute all the way through, but we don't go beyond that. So, we've cleared out all the parentheses. I think before we start shifting things across those inequality symbols, across equal signs, across this wall that's here, it's much better to, to, to try to simplify this side. Let's shave this down. Let's simplify this side. Shave it down. So what we're going to do before we start shifting things across that wall, we are going to combine up our like terms. We're going to take this 5k and we're going to subtract a 2k. We're going to combine those up to be a 3k. And we're going to take that 20 and that minus 12 and we're going to combine these up. 20 minus 12 will give us an 8. And we're not going to flip the symbol because we're not even multiplying, dividing. We're, we're not doing anything other than combining up like terms. And on this side over here, we're going to combine up a 5... Oh, I can't believe I did that. I actually did distribute through. And here I was telling you not to distribute through, and I did distribute through. Shame on me. I think I got all caught up in that. Okay, so a 5 minus 1 will give me a 4, leaving me with a 5k plus 4. There we go. So just like before, what I'm going to do is shift things on either side. Let's go ahead, and in this case, let's just subtract that 3k from both sides. Because, yet again, I want to prove another point to you. We've seen enough of this where we come up with a negative on the variable and that makes us flip. So I'm going to subtract that 3k. That's going to leave me with an 8. And on this side, a 2k plus 4. Do I flip? Nope. Didn't even multiply or divide. And so I see all my variables over here. That means all the constants have to go on that side. That means take that 4 out of there. And let's subtract 4 from both sides. Leaving me with a 2k over here. And on this side, an 8 minus 4 will give me a 4. Do I flip? Nope, didn't even multiply or divide. However, now I'm going to go through and I'm going to divide by that 2. And when I divide by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2. 
So I get a two on this side, a K on this side. Do I flip? Hey, I'm, I divided. Do I flip? Nope. Didn't multiply or divide by a negative. Here's the point that I'm trying to make. There's my solution. And a lot of people, they don't like having that variable over there on the right. They, they feel a need to have the variable on the left. You don't have to. You, your whole goal is separate constants and variables. Just get, the, get them away from each other. And you did that successfully here. So it's okay to leave it like this. But if you are one of those who just can't stand to have that variable over there on the right-hand side, that's okay. You can move your variable over here, put the 2 over here. But remember, the small end of the inequality symbol is with a K. The big end's with the 2. So if you're going to rearrange it like this, you've got to make sure that the small end is still with the K and the big end is still with the 2. So if you really need to have a look like that, you've got to flip everything around. Now remember, here's why I said it does not matter which side you've got it on, because in terms of my graph, all I care is that I'm worried about these numbers right here. How do they compare to the 2? Yes, they're smaller than the 2. Small end goes with the small numbers, big end goes with the big number. This is the small end. These are smaller than 2. So there's that 2. Where's everything smaller? Certainly, everything down here. So I'm going to shade everything down here. And remember, I'm going to shade that arrow because it's going on forever. And if you would have written it this way, notice what it says. This is what I'm worried about. These, how do they compare to that two? They're smaller than the two. It's the same thing. And that's why I say it really doesn't matter which side you've got your variable on because all that matters is which end of the inequality symbols with the variable and which end of the inequality symbols with the number. So we've got a setup here. Everything's smaller than the two's on the left. That K, is it a part of the solution set? Does it get a bracket? Does it get a parenthesis? The equal to part here means yes, it gets a bracket. So my snowplow is going to shovel the snow in this direction as a bracket. And there is my graph that is a picture representation of these solutions. And now I'm ready for my interval notation. And I'm going to start as far left as possible. Here, as far left as possible, is back here at negative infinity, which always gets a parenthesis. I'm going to go, 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 go. How far am I going to go? Up to the 2. And 2 is included, so it gets a bracket. And there's my interval notation. That is math symbols to represent that picture. The picture is a, a picture representation of those solutions. And one more thing I want to make sure you really understand in terms of truth. So all these numbers back here, I said this is everything that will work. So anything that I pick back here, when I plug it in right here, here, and here, it will create truth. For instance, if I pick the 0, it will create truth. Because 0 plus 4 is 4, 5 times 4 is 20, 0 plus 6 is 6, negative 2 times 6 is negative 12, that gives me an 8, and over here is 0 plus 1 is 1, 5 times 1 is 5, 5 minus 1 is 4. And this says greater than or equal to. Is 8 bigger than 4? Sure is. So see, everything back here works. Any of these numbers will work. Anything up here won't work. If I picked a 5 and put it in there, 5 plus 4 is, 20, is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. And then if I put that 5 in here, 5 plus 6 is 11, 2 times 11 is 22, and then 45 minus 22 is 23. And if I put that 5 in here, 5 plus 1 is 6, 5 times 6 is 30, 30 minus 1 is a 29, and this says 23 greater than or equal to 29. Well, that's not true. 23 is not bigger than 29. So see, everything back here doesn't work. And how about that 2? When I plug it in here, 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 times 5 is 30. And then here, 2 plus 6 is 8, 2 times 8 is 16, and 30 minus 16 is going to be a 14. And when I put the 2 in here, 2 plus 1 is 3, 5 times 3 is 15, and 15 minus 1 is 14. And remember, we said bigger than is okay, but equal to is as well okay. 14 is 14, so that's why the 2 works. That's why it is a part of the solution set. So, hopefully this helps you to understand how to solve your linear inequalities when you have one variable in there. Not more than one variable, just one variable. Treat it like an equation. Do everything you would have done if there was an equal sign in there. Just look for when it's time to flip the symbol. When you multiply or divide by a negative, that flips that symbol around. And then just remember, 
when you've got your solution, the variable is what you're worried about. How does it compare to that number? That allows you to create the graph. And if it is a part of the solution set and is included, give it a bracket. If it's not a part of the solution set, is not included, give it a parenthesis, and then that interval notation will come right from it. Because you're going to step on the solutions and you're going to say, I'm going to start walking as far left as possible. Where will I begin? And then you're going to walk, 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 walk. That's what the comma means. And then just decide how far you're going to walk. So I hope that helps. Have a great day.